Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to be better, starting with today's Be Better podcast. You know, and for our host, Michael Curlin, that's more than just a tagline to the company he founded. It's a culture that permeates his whole organization, propels everyone on the team to be better to each other, their customers, and their communities, as well as themselves. So each week on this Be Better podcast, Michael is going to interview outstanding leaders who are striving to be better in their own personal and professional lives. So let's start by being better together with our host, Michael Curlin. Hey, Michael. Hey, Paul. Thanks for that uh, great introduction. Thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us today on the Be Better podcast. Uh, today, my guest is uh, Javier Lozano, Jr. He is the National Director of Business Development for CMI Mechanical. Javier, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's good to see you, buddy. Last time we saw each other, we were in person in a time where we could actually shake hands and not be uh, not be looked at sideways for doing something like that. And uh, I look forward, right. to the day, look forward to the day that we can do that again. Yeah, I, know, I agree. I've been good. It's been uh, it's been kind of crazy, you know. But uh, I agree. It's been it's been weird, you know, going from where when we first met, you know, at uh, in Denver at the uh, the Gaylord Event Center, and you know things were just normal. I mean, it was not normal, normal, but it was still kind of normal. And then now we're here, and I mean, this is kind of I don't want to keep overusing the re- new phrase, but but it's the new normal. But you know, it's it's what you got to do. Um, and we're doing great over here on our end in Denver. Uh, things are fine. I can't complain. Uh, things could always be worse in other situations, you know? Absolutely. I think uh, you bring up a good point. I mean, it is the new, we don't know exactly what the new normal is going to be, but our new normal now, uh, you know, just social distancing, staying, stay at home orders, working from home. Uh, yep. We were lucky enough and blessed enough to, to be agile enough to, to make that easy, easy transition. Hopefully you were as well. It sounds like you were. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So, uh, you know, we like to start off the show with a little softball here. Um, what do you do and why do you do it? Okay. So as you kind of intro- introduced me, I'm the National Director of Business Development. So a lot of times some people think like, so you basically just develop business. Well, I, I would say I do a little bit more than just that. I basically handle our sales and marketing strategy for, for Sign Mechanical on the national scale as well as some of it on the local scale as well too. Uh, I just, I have a passion about sales and marketing. I truly, truly enjoy it. Um, I think the reason why I have such a big passion for it is I started a business um, 2008 at the height of the recession and had my back against the wall. I had no choice, I signed a five-year lease um, and right, this is right before the recession actually hit. Signed a five-year lease, personal guarantee, you know, n- nothing but me to make this thing work. So it was either you fold or you got really good at sales and marketing. And then as things kind of evolved and I, I kind of started refining my craft, if you will, I decided that, you know, I've got to start getting some better systems in place and, and started getting really good at it. And eventually my passion started growing more towards the sales and marketing side versus what I was doing, you know, at the time was running a martial arts and personal training studio. And so I eventually just kind of started seeing that that was more of what I wanted to do. And this is kind of, you know, where I'm at right now with see my mechanical, where I get to handle that aspect of it is, is kind of creating the strategies and deploying some of the, the, the strategies that we're working on as well, too. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you're a very interesting guy, Javier, you, you know, you, you started off when we met, you told me you, you opened your own martial arts business, you know, at the height of the recession, like you said. And you were able to come through that with uh, flying colors, transition into now, uh, you know, national uh, director and you're doing business development for an HVAC company. And the other things that are interesting to me is that you got your own podcast, which uh, you do a great job with, uh, you know, and, and you, you do it all yourself too. Like I, you know, I, I need Paul to do all this stuff for me and, and you, you, you're just a freelance and doing, doing it yourself. And then, you also, I was, you know, checking out your, your LinkedIn page before it says you're a number one best-selling author. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious about that. <laughs> Talk to me about that. Like where, like, where does this little humble part of I'm a number one best-selling author, but I don't want to ever talk about this come from? Yeah. Um, so basically a couple of years ago, I hired a business coach. I've, I've hired business coaches throughout my career um, just because that's how you, how you get to 
I, I want I want to see that's how you grow in your not just accountability, but you grow in your, your knowledge. And so I hired a business coach and he, you know, had some other clients and whatnot. And so basically what we did is we all decided to, to put together a, a book. Um, it's called Influence and Income Influence and Income Online. And essentially it was his name is James Smiley, and he got other um, of his clients and other influencers that's all contributed into this book and i wrote a section on the topic it was actually about podcasting believe it or not and um basically i decided to kind of take that you know to the next level and we kind of stopped helping promote it and so 27 other entrepreneurs promoted to their network of influence as well too and essentially the way it works is when you write a book and you know it reaches number one status on Amazon, um, then you're a best-selling author. And I didn't realize that's what it was. I'm not going to say it was easy, because you have to have you know good topics, good content, good information. But then you also have to have the network to actually get it out there as well too. So not unfortunately, I'm not a New York best New York's uh, you know best-selling author, but you know I'll, I'll take this as a stepping stone for right now. Um, but this happened last year. We uh, we wrote the book in like 2018. And then we started kind of like getting everything finalized. And then in 2019, um, we started kind of pushing it and we were all just, you know, going nuts on it as far as getting traffic to it. And eventually it became a number one, number one book. And that's kind of how it ended up. Interesting. I did not know that. And I'm going to now have to add to your number one status and go purchase <laughs> me a copy on Amazon. So I'm looking forward to, especially the podcasting part, you know, uh, that that's uh, something right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's, there's other things in there, but um, there's, there's everyone writes a topic about what they wanted to do. And that was kind of something I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try this one. I'm gonna do the podcasting part. And so there's a lot of good information in that book. So it's really cool. And what what really got you, you seem like a renaissance man, author, podcasting, sales, martial arts. So, you know, what got you into the podcast? And what made you excited about that? You know, I, I, I really enjoy speaking in front of a crowd. Uh, so, I mean, whenever you're, you're teaching martial arts and you're doing personal training and you're doing group training, like you have to talk to an audience, you know, and, and at times that my audience would be as large as 200 people. And so I, I just enjoy communicating and sharing stories and, and talking about things that just kind of are a way of expressing yourself in, in a sense. And what I started realizing more and more as like, you know, going live on Facebook and, and, and now you can do it on, on LinkedIn and all this, that we all, to a degree, all need to have a platform that we can actually go out and speak and gain a certain level of not just influence, but a certain level of credibility, uh, a certain le level of, you know, I'm not going to say knowledge, but just authority is probably the best way of doing it. I gained a big chunk of my authority by running a business, by speaking in front of people, by speaking in front of businesses and, and coaching other people on how to improve. I started thinking, you know, this whole podcasting thing, I, I can totally speak into this uh, because this is my platform. This is what I enjoy doing. I, I love speaking to, you know, about topics that really engage me, like what we're doing right now with the Be Better podcast. And podcasting just kind of came natural to me. So now it's just one of those things that it wasn't really a, kind of an awkward you know, you sit there and you talk in front of a camera, you don't know what to say or, or a mic or whatever. It's, it's more of like, okay, map out my, my conversations, what I'm going to talk about, my topics, and then we start going nuts on it. And that's kind of how we, I, I kind of worked on it in the beginning. And eventually it just kind of started, you know, the podcast that we run right now, it kind of just grew and morphed into its own self. I had a vision for what it was, and then it's something different, but I just, I, I enjoy the platform to go out and speak on this. That's that's kind of crazy, you know how you, how things just morph into what they're supposed to be, right? You know, yes, they, they find their own way, even if it's not what you expected. Yeah, expectation. it's and I think it takes some time to figure that part out because we all have a vision of what we want, but then once you let your podcast kind of have certain types of guests on there, then the podcast starts shaping itself, and that's kind of what I learned about running my podcast, um, you know, with facility and property management secrets radio is is that. I had a vision of what I thought it would do and, and it's gotten us some business, but what it's, it's just, it's completely just transformed itself to something different and it's exciting. I can't complain, you know? Yeah. I mean, you do a great job and uh, how many episodes are you into the podcast as now, as of now? So the way we do our episodes is because we do our interviews, they're rough 
roughly 45 minutes long, give or take. And so like, like ours is probably going to be, you know, you and I here is like, like 25 minutes. And what I've realized is that some people can handle about a 20 to 25 minute podcast. So I split them into two, two, two parts every episode. And so if you think about it, you know, we're at 24 and I've got four more interviews that I got to edit and, and publish. So, I mean, really we probably interviewed 12 dozen people or so. Um, and then we've got a few other ones that we're kind of getting lined up, but that's kind of how we handle it is we put them in the two part series and we just kind of go from that point. Great. Well, you know, you, you've done all these different things in, in such a short career because you're definitely a young guy. Uh, I, I want to know, what are you curious about right now? What, what, where's your focus? Uh, what, you know, what's next? That's a good question, man. Um, so I, I guess to kind of paint the backstory a little bit is, you know, I ran a business for 10 plus years and I achieved everything I ever wanted to achieve by doing that. Um, I thought I was going to be running my business for forever until I was like 60 years old or whatever. Um, to the point, I don't tell this to a lot of people, but I got the business name tattooed on my back, on my, on my back. Um, and oh, I wow. saw that. That's, that's commitment right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell a lot of people about that, but it's in Japanese. And in, the funny part about it is like, so people ask like, Oh, what is that? I was like, ah, oh, it's just, you know, Japanese, you know, calligraphy. And then once people get asked more details and like, it's, this is what it is. And this is what it means. It's actually the name of my company. They're like, you tattooed your company in your back. I'm like, I was committed. So I was, I was literally, yeah, literally. I was like, I was, this is what I'm going to do. And, and 10 years later, things kind of shaped into something different. I achieved everything I wanted to do in the business. Um, and I'm not saying I couldn't have done more, but I, I, I just saw that there was not enough for me to want to continue that. Plus I had a family. You know, young kids, wife, and it was just, I wasn't putting the time that my family needed. I was being an absentee father, not by choice, but by circumstances, you know? And so I decided to sell. Um, and it took me a while to kind of figure out where I wanted to kind of take my next career jump, if you will, because being self-employed for over 10 years, you, your thought process is completely different. You're used to making all the decisions. So, you know, it took a little time to kind of figure out where I wanted to, to take things. And, and when I kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to go back into the workforce. Uh, I'm going to start kind of exploring this and see where I can go. I mean, this opportunity with CMI Mechanical was great because it allowed me to take my entrepreneurial spirit, my creativity, my this is what I want to kind of do and driving factor and apply that. Um, you know, where I'm at now in my career, I, I want to take this thing to the next level. I mean, I... I do believe that I've got the qualities and the the skill sets to be an executive, you know, C-suite executive, that sort of stuff. And when is that going to happen? I have no clue. You know, my goal is essentially is, is to use every opportunity I have and just grow it as big as possible. So with CMI Mechanical, my goal really is, is to bring in as much business as possible, but bring in business accounts that are like, we never had a shop before. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm here bringing these opportunities that are like, wow, we're actually in the fight for this type of account. We can actually win this um, and, and take those things in there. But I'd love to see myself into some sort of higher level, bigger decision making um, where there's a lot of pressure being kind of put on me, if you will. Yeah, uh, to your point, what you said earlier made me think, uh, you, you know, you you called all the shots and then you want to go back to the workforce. I was I was the total reverse. I. I was in the workforce, you know, as a director of business development for uh, my previous company. And once that tenure ended, I was like, I don't know how I'm ever going to listen to anybody else ever again. So at least <laughs> now if I'm, if I'm pissed off at my boss, it's me. And so exactly. I can, yeah. I can be mad, mad at myself, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's great. So CEO or something like that, that's what you're looking for to, to get to next or. Yeah, I, you know, I never thought I would say that, you know, but then again, I never thought I'd sell my business either, right? So, right, clearly. <laughs> but I'm not going to put CEO on my back yeah. like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to advise against no, no more, no more tattoos of uh, job descriptions on your back, please. Yeah, no, but you know, it's funny. It's, it's something that it's, it's kind of started of across my mind. I'm actually reading a book as we speak, um, an audio book. It's called the, the CEO Next Door. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I haven't. Um, Tell me about it. It's, it's a great book. I, I do a lot of audio books. That's kind of all I do. I do. I've been reading other actual paperback books, but that's one I do. And I just read it when I go to work. Um, and essentially it just talks about 
about how a lot of us, you know, think that a CEO is going to be someone of like these big Fortune 500 companies. And we have to take into account that there's a lot of actual small companies in the small to medium sized businesses that are anywhere from 5 million, 20 million, 100 million, et cetera, um, that also need CEOs and have board directors and all this other stuff. And they're talking about that there's opportunities in these areas and your odds are much, much better at becoming a CEO in, um, in, these, in these roles, in these companies. And how they kind of paint the picture is, is that they say your first eight years of your career, it should be X. And then your next, you know, six to 10 years should be doing Y. And then once you hit your late forties to early fifties, this is where you start implementing what you've worked on the past 15 plus years. And you start trying to get into these C-suite and type, you know, type roles or into boards and whatever. And then you can start working towards becoming that CEO and it kind of maps everything out. They have this entire like statistics behind it um, where they're literally taking, um, they coach people to become CEOs and to actually, and also coach people as they actually achieve that. And they're taking surveys and they're taking information, they're collecting data and they have all this data they're spitting out saying like, this is what our data is actually showed. And it's really, it's, it's kind of amazing. So after reading that book, I have not done yet, but as, as I've been reading it, I was like, you know, this might be something that I want to entertain. And it's, it's kind of crossed my mind. And so I'm not going to discount it, but it's, yeah, something that I'm kind of curious about. Well, I think, uh, you know, from my experience, uh, I, I am what you just described, the CEO for the smaller company. And I mean, I, I'm self-appointed, so that's probably the only way I was going to get to be a CEO, <laughs> <laughs> at least before my 50s. But, uh, but I think you'd make a great CEO. I think, uh, I think you got all the, the, the chops to do it. So, I, you know, I, I, I hope that, you know, in 10 years, we're still doing our podcast and we're still coming on each other's shows. And at some point, you're CEO of CMI or some other company that would be happy to have you. Yeah, no, it'd be great. It'd be exciting. So what motivates you to be better? Because it seems like, you know, we've talked about these, these career paths and how, you know, you definitely have a little strange, like uh, weaving career path, which is really cool, but like you've, you've succeeded at everything you've done. So what motivates you to be better and get to these, you know, these levels to be able to jump to a new place and then start over and then become successful doing that as well. Like why, why do you keep changing and, and the motivation to keep going? Yeah, and that's a great question. Um, I'm very competitive. So I, I, don't, I, I don't share this very often as well either, but I'm also a former world champion athlete. I used to compete professionally in sport karate and won a world title in 2001. And I wow. basically, yeah. I and just keep uh, finding out all these great <laughs> nuggets about you here. <laughs> And I, um, that, that wasn't an easy task by any means. It was, it, there was a lot of pain and suffering before all of that. Uh, I remember back in, you know, when I was teaching classes to my students, they would see my trophies and they're like, you must've won all the time. I'm like, do you see the trophies for like fifth place and eighth place? They're like, no, where are those? Like, they don't give them out. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, <laughs> you're only seeing my successes. You didn't see all my failures. Right. And so, you know, like I just, I'm very competitive. I, I don't like to lose. I don't enjoy coming in second place. I mean, I, it goes to the extreme of like Talladega Nights where um, Ricky Bobby's dad is like, if you're not first, you're last, you know? And I'm not telling that to, you know, saying that my kids have to act like that. That's a personal thing for me, but sure. I can't do things for fun. I, you know, it's, it's, it has to be competitive. Like if there's something that I'm good at doing, I have to win, you know? So at sports martial arts, had to win. It was like the only option. Getting second place wasn't wasn't something like, oh, you did you, you had a good match. I'm like, no, that that wasn't my, the plan. You right. know, and people would say like, why don't you just go back and compete for fun? I'm like, no, like that's like telling Tiger Woods just to go enter a tournament just for fun. You know, like <laughs> you, you, he's not going to do that. Right. And so that's kind of where my mentality is of this whole be better thing is is that I I, I have to win. I have to be the best at everything I do. Um, I mean, there's things that I know I suck at and I'm okay not trying to be the best at it, you know, but if there's things I'm like, you know what, I'm actually kind of decent at this, then I want to find every way possible to leverage my opportunity, whether it's education, um, whether it's, um, you know, networking and interacting with actually top level people, whatever it is, I, I'm trying to do that. I mean, examples that I'm doing that with is I do audiobooks, right? So on average, I'll read one maybe two audiobooks a week, depending on my drives. 
So if I'm driving for a half hour, I'm listening to an audiobook. I mean, since October ish, you know, because I, I, I take breaks and stuff like that. But since last year, 2019, October to now, I've probably read like 15 plus audiobooks. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And like it's, and then I'll go into like a, like where I just don't do anything for like six weeks and my mind is like overloaded. And then I'll go back to like going nuts again. So I don't know, like I, I do, I, I've been reading a, a ton of books and, and just educating myself on improving my marketing, improving my sales, improving my leadership skills, improving like all these things. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. I got this. I don't have these skill sets yet. I need to see what I can try to do about that. And then I'll just look for more books and continue to learn in those aspects. I'll do podcasts as well too, where I listen to other podcasts outside of industry stuff, things that are going to help kind of let, you know, raise my game, if you will. And I guess yep. the last part is, is just my circle of influence. I'm trying to get myself around people like yourself and other successful, you know, people that are either entrepreneurs or business leaders that have things that I could try to strive for, you know? And, you know, that's where you create collaboration. You talk, you ask questions, you do all these things and you start seeing certain trends and, and certain things that people are doing. And so all of that, makes me want to continue to push myself. So as I surround myself with more successful people, I continue to say, you know what? I want to achieve this. I want to achieve this. I want to do that. So you, you, you touched on your like rabid audiobook uh, habit. What, like, what's the best book? What, what book would you recommend to the audience for the, that you've oh, read man. that's for being better? You know, what, what's no. making you strive to be better? The best one you've read at least so that, that we can talk about that a little bit. Okay. You got, um, you got 30 to choose from, right? <laughs> I've got a ton, man. Like my phone is loaded with books. They all have a special place in my heart, to be honest. I know it sounds weird, but they all have something special for me. But I would say the one that probably kind of transformed, there's two. I'll, I'll say one, one of them transformed me to, to reshape my business. And the other one transformed me to go nuts on what I'm committed to doing. The one that kind of helped me reshape the, my business was this book called Build the Sell. It's essentially okay. where you build your business to sell it, even if you don't plan on ever selling it. And at the time, before I read that book, it was, and this was several years ago. This is probably like four or five years ago, I think. At the time when I read that book, I, you know, it was everything kind of ran through me. And then eventually I'm like, you can't scale this. Like if I, if I die, the company is going to die. And so I started to kind of like, I, I use that as a stepping stone to help me kind of figure out the systems I needed to create in my, in the business I was running to the point where it was just kind of like, it was clockwork, everything. It was great. And that helped me sell the business eventually. But the sure. book that I think that's been probably the most, you know, positive for me is, is the 10 X rule um, by Grant Cardone. So have you read that book or no? It's actually in my queue of audiobooks to read. I, Funny story. I was in an Uber, okay, and I was going to uh, I was going to the Staples Center. I remember that. I don't know what for. Probably like a, a game of some sort. Okay. And got started rapping with the Uber driver, and he tells me the same thing. Great book I'm reading right now. Read 10x rule. And for whatever reason, I just downloaded it. And I was yeah. like, okay, you yeah. know, I, I love taking like rant like that's like you know ser serendipitous, right? Like, okay, some guy's gonna tell me in an Uber that's an Uber driver to read a book. Sure, why not? So I haven't actually started uh, listening to it yet because I just finished a, a book on audio myself and I, I kind of do the, a little different than you. I do one audio, one paperback, and then like switch back and forth because I don't cool. have the attention span to focus on two books at the same time. I'll, yep. I'll just uh, get lost in my ADD. So anyway, yep, it's yep. on my, my list of things to do, but tell me more about it. I'm, I'm curious. Oh man, the, I've never read a book where my heart rate was going the entire time, like, you know, like 10 X the entire time. And the book really, the, the way I can kind of sum up the 10 X rules, Grant Cardone talks about just 10 Xing everything. So 10 times your effort on something. So the best example is if we're going to start a podcast, don't just start a podcast and see what happens. Start the podcast and start publishing a bunch of stuff, going nuts on it. And then starts actually, you know, promoting it in every area that you can humanly imagine everything. Um, if you're like, same thing with your, your marriage, you know, don't just be satisfied with your marriage, 10 X your marriage, level it up, you know, like find ways on how to improve your marriage in all these aspects, you know, cool. if you're, you know, and so he talks about these other things that are interesting. He's like, you know, people talk about always like, you know, Grant, you're everywhere. You're annoying. This is, this is frustrating. Yada, yada, yada. And he goes, if you're 
complaining about me, that means that you're seeing me enough to where I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm basically annoying you and you know who I am. Like, and, like, the, like, like the peacock rule. Yeah. yeah. So, it, uh, it, well, I, and I hate to cut you off on that one, but I, we got like a couple of seconds left here and I got to ask this one question. Okay. What do you consider yourself to be an expert at and what's your best advice to our audience? as to oh, what, man. how to get there. You got okay. so many things to choose from, right? So. <laughs> right, yeah, seriously. Um, I would say probably personal branding. Um, and I would say I'm a pretty good expert at that because that's kind of what I do is, is that's how people find me out uh, on, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. And I'd say the biggest advice is produce content that's valuable. Don't just put stuff out there that's junk. Um, and then interact with people actually have conversations with people don't just post something and then don't put you know don't con comment on anybody else's stuff interact with people that's going to eventually create you as an authority in what you're trying to do and by creating your personal brand that allows you to not just um, gain more you know authority and, and influence but it allows you to become an expert in what you're talking about and you start learning more about other people as well too Javier, that's great advice. I totally agree. I think we we align a lot on uh, personal branding and networking. Uh, you know, you get it's it's all about building relationships, being present, and uh, you know, be you know, listening. So yeah, I agree. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, I wish that we could go a little longer. We're definitely going to have you back in the near future. There's so much to talk about. Hopefully, yeah, uh, I'd love to. Know. Yeah, great. And uh, thanks for coming on. And audience, thanks for listening in. Uh, appreciate you guys. Also tuning in and we will uh, talk to you next time. That's it for this week's edition of the Be Better podcast. Join us next week as we all strive to be better right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net.